Hello and welcome dear learners, professionals and students to the another interesting video on bioequivalence studies. In this video uh, series, we will understand the bioequivalence criteria, what are the different aspects of bioequivalence studies, studies and the requirement of bioequivalence studies. Absolute bioavailability. Now, the bioequivalence criteria considers the product as equivalent if there is no significant difference in the test and reference product bioavailability. That means the relative bioavailability. And relative bioavailability means the rate of absorption and the extent of absorption. Rate of absorption means how much faster the two products are absorbed, the test product and the reference product. The speed of absorption that is known as the rate of drug absorption and the extent, extent means up to what extent these products are absorbed and these two are the PK parameters. Now generic and test product can be said to be therapeutically equivalent to the reference product or comparator product or it is also called as innovator product if it passes the bioequivalence criteria. Now bioequivalence criteria means the limits within which the test product can be said to be equivalent to the reference product. Once again we will study here, the two products are said to be bioequivalent if their relative bioavailability BA and the extent of drug absorption after administration in the same molar dose lies within the acceptable predefined limits. Simply the systemic exposure is not significantly different. Now, what do we mean by not significantly different? See, the many of the regulatory authorities considered the not significantly different means the differences in the systemic exposure up to 20% are not clinically significant. That means, if the product, test product lies within the 20% of the reference product values or the rate and extent of the absorption values, then it will be equivalent. And why it is equivalent? Because the systemic exposure variation or range up to 20% are not considered as significant. Then relative bioavailability. Relative means we are checking the bioavailability of test product against the reference product. That's why it is called as relative. It considers the rate of absorption means Cmax. Cmax is the concentration which is maximum during the drug absorption phase and the time at which the the C max is achieved that is called as T max and the extent of drug absorption means AUC area under the curve or it is also referred as area under the time concentration curve. Now C max and AUC this, this is 0 to T means the interval between which the AUC is measured. Now these two parameters are there C max and AUC 0 to T or 0 to tau is we can say for some of the products and 0 to infinity. These are known as the PK parameters. PK parameters are nothing but these are the pharmacokinetic parameters. Now C max is the maximum concentration after dosing and AUC is the area under the concentration versus time curve. Now you can see here 80, 20, 80 and 125 is written here. So this is the basic criteria for 
bio equivalence studies the relative bioavailability rate of absorption means cmax and the extent of drug absorption means auc that is area under the curve now cmax and the auc are known as pk parameters or pharmacokinetic parameters so now the b criteria comes B criteria is the 90% of the confidence interval of geometric mean ratio of these PK parameters used to establish the B should lie within the range of 80 to 125. Now previously we have seen the variation or the range was 20% from the reference values. So if I consider the reference with 100%. So the test product limits will become 80 to 120. But here it is 80 to 125. So there is a question why and how the limits are 80 to 125. And B criteria for the high variable drug is within intra subject CV lower limit upper limit so if within intra subject limit is less than 30 it will be 80 to 125 and similarly with the different intra subject cvs it will be 69.84 to 143.19 so this is for highly variable drugs now b criteria is 90% confidence interval for geometric mean ratio of these PK parameters used to establish B difference B and it should lie within the range of 80 to 125 and differences in systemic exposure up to 20% are not clinically significant. So this means if the reference is considered 100 then lower side 20% and the higher side 20% it will become 80 to 120 but the actual values are 80 to 125 so why the limit is 80 to 125 now see the pk parameters are log normally distributed log normal distribution is done to the data obtained from the b studies to decrease the skewness of the data and to make it more simple and valuable then log normal distribution is a continuous probability distribution of a random variable whose logarithm is normally distributed so statistical calculations involves this log normal distribution and that's why if you log normally distribute the values or the ratios then the ratio of 0 0.8 will give you minus 0 0.223 then the ratio of 1 will give you 0 the ratio of 1.2 will give you 0 0.182 that means here 80 percent here you got 80 percent that means 0.8 here 100 100 here 120 so 120 is not giving you the equivalent value after log conversion but the the ratio of 1.25 will give you the same value as as the 0.8 ratio is giving here that's why the limit is 80 to 125 and the b criteria is 80 to 125 now for highly variable drugs the b criteria differs based on the intra subject variability so subjects means these are the patients or healthy volunteers taken into the study and the blood samples of these subjects are taken for studying the bioequivalence uh, limits. So these are subjects and their variability between these intra subject variability for a parameter is larger than 30%. So mainly the Cmax criteria can be widened from uh, 80, 80 to 125 to the other limits and if 
there is a no clinical relevance to the variation in Cmax, then this widening can be done. Otherwise, the Cmax widening is not acceptable to the regulatory authorities. And the AUC should be within 80 to 125 percent. We cannot claim the widening of AUC. Now, B criteria for highly variable drugs. Now, what are highly variable drugs? These are the drugs for which the intra-subject CV is more than 30 percent, like 35, 40, 45, 50. If it is less than 30 percent, the limit of 80 to 125 is there. Now, like the 20 percent variation, we have considered 80 to 125 and for variation of 23, 25, 28 and 30, these values can be generated. These values we have just calculated from these lower limits and these are not the actual values. These are only for understanding. These values will give you more understanding for the concept. Now, if it is 35 percent, 77.23 to 129.48 can be given. Similarly, for 40 percent will be given. And the last, if the intra-subject CV is equal to or less than 50 percent, then 69.84 percent to 143.19 percent limit can be given. After that, the limit cannot be widened for CMAX and B studies will fail. So, based on the intra-subject variation, the CMAX values are given. Now, for this uh, video, I have referred USFDA guidelines and European agencies guidelines. So, in the bio, bio equivalence and the related points are the always the points of interest in the interviews and interviewers are always interested to check the B studies knowledge of the candidate. So, I think this video is valuable to you and more video will come in the bio equivalence series which will cover the entire topic and the terminologies. So, stay tuned to this channel, Pharma Learning in Depth, and please like, share, and subscribe to this channel. Thank you.